Okay, the first thing that about polymorphism, the first encounter with polymorphism in OOP in, in, in C++. We're going to go with function overloading. After that, we're going to talk about references, understand what references are, how functions are called. And after that, we're going to dig in, uh, dive into dynamic memory allocation and understand how they are. So step by step, we're going to go through this. And by the end of today, uh, you got to know uh, more about how to actually use memory in your benefit. And instead of leaving computer the, 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 the platform to decide uh, how much memory you need to do what, you can take control yourself and get your own memory and ask for your own memory manually. So uh, the computer is going to give it to you. Um, well, when we get there, I'll explain exactly why. Okay? There is a very simple um, just to get your brains ready. Um, just to get your brains ready when we get at the end of the class. And the answer is in dynamic memory allocation. Because this is impossible with your OOP IPC144 knowledge. You cannot do that. You don't have enough information for it. Immediately, you have to ask me, how many numbers? And I'll tell you, I don't know. You tell me, OK, what is the maximum number? I would say, I don't know. It could be three. It could be five billion. I don't know. And you have to see if you can write that number, write that program. Impossible, OK? We're going to fix that problem today. All right? Any questions before we begin? One comment. Good morning. One comment about uh, one comment about uh, uh, using Git. One comment about using Git. Remember, as soon as you ask Git to supervise, as soon as you ask Git to and uh, files, you have to do everything with Git. Trying to keep track of everything. Changes, no problem. Change the, with whatever you want. Keep, Git can keep track of it. But if you create a file in your repository and you commit it to Git, so Git is looking over it, and then you delete that file, then Git doesn't know that it's deleted. It's, it's going to tell you that it's missing. Of course, you can simply tell to Git to revert it, and Git will bring it back for you. So if you delete something by mistake, even with Git or without Git, you can retrieve it back. Git can do that for you. But uh, all the other things, like when you rename something, Git thinks it's deleted. And a file that you did not commit is in your repository. Because you the file is changed, it was, taking, it was trying to look to see, for example, employee.cpp is over there. And you change that to tenor.cpp without it knowing. All Git notices is that employee.cpp is missing student.cpp is added, and it's not committed yet. So, pardon me? Believe me, it's not. So, You have Apple or Windows? No, what do you have? What do you, what do you have Git on? But this, trust me, this is not the case, OK? You think that it's, it's there, just check and see the logs. You will see that Git says this file. If you rename it back to what it was before, you're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you, OK. It, 
Good, we got you some issues probably. Well, when you come, I'll check with you later. But that's not the case. So if, if the command go git rm, git remove to remove a file. You can't just say delete. If you say delete, there's going to be a missing file in your repo. No, it's deleted, yeah. Not gonna go. Just remember, it's better and you should do your file organization in a repository using Git, not the operating system, okay? All right, so now I want to write a, a module to draw lines for me. If I want to do something like that, first of all, the module is created as the standard type of module that we create, which is essentially I have a line.h and a line.cpp. Line.h is going to have, if not defined, as we said before, stds, and then we're going to put over here line h, and then copy this. And in here, I will write define it there. So that's the first step. Step number two, create the namespace. SDDS is just to remind you of how it is. Okay? That's my empty header file. Now I'll go to my TPP file for the module. In here, I'm going to say include run. And I told you. through no, regardless of what the logic is. Why? Because we are in the SDDS department, therefore our names are, uh, code should reside in namespace SDDS. I have to have safeguards for a, for a header file, therefore I'm going to add those things for a header file. And each module, each module needs, it, it doesn't necessarily need, but it's better to include its own header file. Okay, uh, it might not need it, but uh, do it anyway. You'll find out why I actually that later on. And the program that is actually using our module includes the module, includes the header file of the module, and uses the, the namespace. Okay, now I am back the program that I'm looking right now. Put it under microscope. You CPP, you can call it line unit test.cpp just to test, uh, make sure that your, the, your module works properly. After that works properly, you set aside your main and you bring your module into the system and your system is going to work with your module. So we want to write a module that draws a line, easy breezy. When I want the line to be drawn, what do I do? I, I, write, I write a function called line. Now, a line that is drawn on the thing is something like this. So I want to I wanna, I wanna draw, some, draw something like this. This is my line. If I want to draw something like this, what are the specifications of this line? Number one, I need to know what I'm drawing it with, right? So the character that I fill the line with, I need that. So I'll put it over there. So in here it's going to be character fill. Okay, now we know about the chat, and then the next thing I want to know is my line, the one that I want to write. So that's my prototype. Then
can actually go over here. It's an it's a uh, what should we call it? Uh, uh, an IDE. So these things can be done with this. I can say create definition of line in line.cpp. Poof, I do that and it actually <laughs> writes the thing for me so I can fill in the blanks. It's a good thing so I don't have to retype it. Now, what I wanted to say was this. In a prototype of a header file for your functions, you know for a fact that the names of the arguments are not needed. If I had this, it would work perfectly. Do we all remember this from IPC? Are we okay with this? All right. So the next thing you need to know is that you should not do this. Use the advantage that you have because it's ignoring the, the argument names, put some descriptive thing in there. So when two weeks later you're looking at your prototype, you don't have to say what the heck is the character, what the heck is the man, what does it have to do with the line? You know what I mean? Because it doesn't tell you what those arguments are. So in here, to fill the line with no problem right so the one is um, I don't think we need anything that's length is fine enough okay there are number of characters number number of characters Okay, pardon me? Why not put a comment over there? Is it easier to write the comment over there or just put the name of the variable? Sure, put the comment, but never leave those alone. Never leave it. At least put over there, because comment is at the top. You have to say, first argument is yada, yada, yada. Second argument is in it, yada, yada, yada. Then somebody looks at this, has to go up, take a look at the thing, read the comment and see what's going on. Sure. If I want to write the comment, this is what I will do. I'm going to come over here, and actually IDEs provide that. So if you do one, two, three, poof, this happens. So summary, it's actually created an Excel document for you. That's going to be the summary. They're going to explain what it is. Then you're going to say parameter one, what does it do? So now, yes, you can do that. You can actually say over here, put over here fill, then put it in front of it what fill. We good? Okay. So, uh, questions? <laughs> you need to. You need to know. Learn voodoo. <laughs> you need to. <laughs> no, I have actually a doll. You know, I push it, and it's a programmer typing it for me. Uh, no. See, see, what happens is this. So, uh, so. Either, either, either do it like this, <laughs> either do it like this, or as our friend didn't like it, put small stuff over here. And one, two, three, it, nothing happened. One, two, three. Okay? So you put three flashes, uh, Visual Studio does it for you. I think Excel will do the same. But this is a standard Excel for you. I'll tell you what it's like. So now in here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay over here. Draw it. Uh, You regret it, don't you? <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> and over here is the length of the line. What is good about this? What is good about this is this. If I come over here and I write over here line with dashes and take a look at take a look at this. Draws a horizontal line on the screen, yada yada yada, and then in here length. It shows you that you're supposed to write the length with bad spelling. Of course, I put it. <laughs> okay, and this is the length of the line. So it actually gives you help as you're doing it.
okay? And if I come over here, it's going to take fill, one L. <laughs> I have to fix those. This is a character to draw the line with, all right? So, what the hell is it after over there? I don't know. I have to take a look. Oh, anyway. So, in here, I'm going to put 40. So, that's my, that's my program. And in here, what, why did it say after? Draw lines. Draw a horizontal line. Communication between brain and hands don't. And this is length. I'll fix these two, don't worry. <laughs> He's not going to ask any questions anymore. Yes. <laughs> two questions now. Holy mother. Okay. All right, go ahead. Actually, I have to do something. Can I? I'm there. Because people are going to say what's going on. What are we laughing at here? Go ahead. The safeguard. Is there no need for an underscore at the end? What did I hear? The what? The safeguard, right? Yeah, safeguard. Compilation safeguards. Okay. Uh, I think the last class you did make mention of an underscore at the end. Is it not compulsory? It's not. No. As long as you stick, the under, the under, if stick to one rule and follow it. Sure. If if that makes you happy, that's fine. But as long as they're identical, you can copy it up and put it down to make sure so the they're identical. No, it's, it's not the same. Okay. Okay. So quick. I thought you said two. All right. Are we? Now, you can actually compare. See if it's okay. So I compile the, the code. Obviously, nothing's going to get printed because my line is not doing anything, right? But at least I know the syntax is correct. Now I'm going to actually write a code over here to do what I wanted to do, which is for int int i set to zero i less than fill oh i less than length and i plus plus. And now in here I'm going to say c out. Uh, fill, and I'm going to go C out and L. And I'll make sure that I include IO stream always uh, the, uh, today I have some, something wrong with me. Okay. Uh, and using namespace STD. Okay. So now my line is actually doing something for me. Right? And because I use C out here, that's where I include IO stream, not in line. Line doesn't need it. Okay. If I run the program, it works perfectly. Only thing that it needs is the is line.h. Are we okay with this? All right. It's like when you're doing something like this, sometimes you just want to draw a line with certain length. And you don't care what the character is. I just want a line, 50 characters, be done with it. Now, if I wanted to do this in C language, what I had to do? So I had to actually come in here and create another function. I'm not going to comment it, don't worry. Uh, this is going to be something like void line with no length. <laughs> Okay, then uh, with no uh, with no fill, and in here I'm gonna say int length, right? I do something like this. I create the file, I create the the, uh, the function, and in here I recall the other function. So I'm gonna say line with a dash and only the length. Reusing my code. Are we okay with this, ladies and gentlemen? Are you okay with this? So now if I actually want to have a line, I'll do this over here. I'm going to say line with no fill. And in here, I'm going to put, say, 60. So that, and by the it's going to be. 
all right? Now, the good thing about C++ is that it's a polymorphic language, which means C++ doesn't recognize the functions only by their name, like C. The signature, now this is the standard interview explanation, like if you're going for an interview, somebody tells you what is polymorphism and all, all function overloading. C language, for C language, the signature is the name of the function, and it cannot be repeated. What is signature? Something that identifies you. So C recognizes function by their names. So if they have a printf, they call it printf. Now if they want to print that in a file, they have to call it printf. They have to change the name of the function. You cannot have two printfs. It doesn't work. In C++, that's not the case. C++ is signature for a function is the name and the argument. Therefore, I do not need to call the other one line with no fill. All I need to do is This function from C++'s point of view is line char int. And the name of this function for C++'s point of view is line int. And those two names are different. You understand? So hence the polymorphic view of C++ language. Same action, doing the same thing in different way. We understand? We have two lines. They are working exactly the same way. Ta-da. All right? And sometimes when you just say, line and character, you want to use a character to print the line for you for 70 characters, let's say, or 79 the size of the thing and yada yada. So let's let's go seven. So if you want some kind of, so if I say just line, I want to do this. I want to say line and in here I'll do that. When I don't mention I want it that way. And I avoid line care. Fill. Calling again the, the line and pass the fill to it with 79. Right? You okay with this, everyone? And not only that, say if I want nothing to be there, I can go line like that. And I say if they don't mention it, use a dash, Anna. Uh, so make it a standard. So in here, I'm going to create the third line. Void line. And I'll go like this. And remember, we don't put void in the parentheses for the functions anymore. And in here, I'm going to say line, a dash, and 70, 79, or 70, whatever. OK, 79, 79, 79. OK? So now if I run the program, the program runs, and all the three things, what errors? No overload takes zero. Of course it does. Didn't I put the thing? Oh, I forgot to do this one. Apologies. Void line. I forgot to put the prototype. There we go. Now I have three of them. It has nothing. So the signatures are essentially this. The first one is line. The second one is line care. And the third one is line. Uh, the fourth one is line. All different functions. Correct? So they can differentiate between them. Are we okay? And if two functions share the same like Then it cannot work. Yeah, it oh, because the signature is identical. But is the type is the type of the argument? Pardon me? Is it type? So it's type that is How important. Is yeah, argument? so that's why I did it like this. So from C point of view is line care int. Line care int. No, you cannot just change it. Put this one. Excellent. Okay. Are we okay with this? 
All right, so that's number one. Number two is obvious things that that compiler can take care of it for us. For example, when you write character fill length, and this one is the void line character fill. This one, the difference between this one and this one is that this is only missing a length. Is that correct? Right? So, You can. You go into the prototype. So those who are, the signatures are identical, but missing stuff at right, you can actually tell the compiler to do it. So the logic is the same. You are not doing anything. You're just passing a value for that. Okay? If that's the case, you don't need this anymore. You don't need this anymore. What you do, you go in a prototype, you say equals 79. Which essentially means, if the right one was missing, uh, please do that for me. So, it, so, when the function call is happening over here, when the first one is called, it knows what's going on. The second one says, I don't, I don't have a function. Let me see if there's a default value for the argument. There is, I'll pass that one instead. So, it calls the same function again, and I can run it. It works exactly the same way. And when you think about it, the one that doesn't have anything is exactly the same. It's two of them missing. So instead of creating the third one that was here, I can simply pass a dash as a default for the other one. So now in here, I'm going to put over here a dash. So if they are both provided, it's going to use them to print it. If the right one is missing, it's going to put 79. If the next one is missing, it's going to put dash. But obviously, the syntax of C++ doesn't allow you to miss the first one, but provide the second one. That's not going to work. You can't do that. It just doesn't make sense, right? So you have to always miss it from right side. That's, that's how it works. That's how the syntax dictates. Okay? Now, if you compile and ran this thing in an old C++ compiler, it would have given you an error. Because character and int are very close. They're both integers. Right? This is an integer only between minus 128 and positive uh, 127. This is an integer between minus something billion to positive something billion. Uh, looked after closely, these two would have been same signature. But now it's not. Okay? Now, okay. So if I remove this one, if I remove that one, it will still compile and work incorrectly. I'll tell you. Like, for example, this is... So just let me show you what's going on in here. So in here, I'm saying line 60, right? Let's make it line 65. Okay, so if I run it now, it's going to show the first one, that one, second one like this, and the other one at 65 dashes, right? Are we okay with this? Now let's remove this and see what happens. Am I going to get error? No. It runs. But compiler best to make the calls match. So that's why the 
they were both integers, they didn't know what's going on. Now it has to cast it if it's not available. So the cast is not done automatically. That's why it works. That's why it looks at this and it knows a literal value for uh, uh, ad, a, an integer is an int. If I put over here char, then it will call the character one. Okay? So now in here I can bring this back and everything's going to work normally. So now if I run it, it goes back to 65 being 65 and I can force it to be a character if I'm nuts. I can actually come over here and say make this a character. Now compiler will call the character one, which is 65. Okay? And that, ladies and gentlemen, our function over and the fault value for, uh, for our questions. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, good thing. It loads over the previous version. Yeah. Amazing. It do, does something beyond its capability. Hence, it's polymorphic. Right? So thank you. You actually answered my question. But no, jokes aside, <laughs> jokes, jokes, jokes aside, uh, overloading essentially, but we have, we have another one that's going to, Rock your boat in the second half of the semester called overriding. Careful that you don't mix these two. We are doing overloading. Okay? If you read some place in C, a function overrides the other one, completely ignore it. We don't know it. We don't know it after the second half, in the second half of the semester. Overloading is what you do. Overload essentially means same name, different signature. Same name, different signature. Okay? And remember, it's fake polymorphism, it's not real. Because when you look at it closely, the functions are not really the same. Difference between polymorphism and inheritance? Okay. Inheritance says, if you believe in evolution, in inheritance... Uh, in this code? It, I don't have any inheritance here. It's just... Okay. Is a... Is a... If you can say that, it's inheritance. Can you say airplane is a fly? Pigeon is a Airplane is a fly? Really? Airplane is a pigeon? Pigeon is a fly? I don't know what to say. But laptop computes, laptop computes, server computes too. You cannot say laptop is a compute. Right? Or laptop processes, compute, like server processes too. You cannot say server is a processes. <laughs> you can't do that. But you can say server is a computer, laptop is a computer. That's inheritance. Inheritance is reusing design. Okay? Polymorphism is doing the same thing in a different way. Doing the same thing in a different way. Okay? You're not using design at all. 
actually exact opposite. You are changing the sign. In this case, I am reusing, I am changing, the, modifying the design of the other one and remove the character out of it and only have the face. So I'm changing the design. Design means you are bringing changes. Actions do not inherit. You can't say talk inherits from another talk. Inheritance happens between beings. Actions belong to beings. You cannot inherit, you cannot have an action. Action doesn't exist to inherit anything. I talk Azerbaijanian and Somebody over here talks Mandarin. I cannot say one talk is inheriting from another one. I can say I'm a human being, I talk, and I'm an Azerbaijanian human being, and I have a Chinese Mandarin human being who speaks Mandarin. And because we both talk, now we are polymers. We are doing the same action in a different way. All right. Done? Any questions? <laughs> All right. We have a very curious class. Are we good? So now we know what the uh, polymorphism is, and we're going to go to the next thing. Uh, this class is in SIA, so um, I, I think most of us over here came from other countries, right? Maybe all of us. Okay? I don't know what happened to you, but when I came to Canada, the very first thing that they do is try to change my name. <laughs> yeah, I went to, uh, seriously, I went to, uh, I was working in the recycling factory, and the guy told me, Freddy is difficult, can I call you Freddy? <laughs> Learning the whole language, damn it. You learned my name for it. But anyway, so I was Freddy. Right? So they called me Freddy over there. Freddy this and Freddy that. So I was Freddy for a while. So if I, if, if I tell you oh, my name is Fardak, Call me Freddy. Do we have two people or one person? Do I have twice as time, much time, so you can ask Freddy some question and fart out some, and at the same time, no, they can't, right? They are the same being. We don't have two different people. We need to understand this. Do we understand this? Okay. And if I put over here a speaker, okay, and I'm going to say, this is Freddy. What do you think? It means I'm standing behind the microphone somewhere and I'm going to talk to you through that speaker for you. So that speaker and Freddy for you. Are we okay with this? Or far that? Whatever. Okay? Everybody's okay with this concept. We can do that in C++. What we can do, we can rename variables and add more aliases to it. Okay? So that's what we can do. Why? Because we want to hurt <laughs> because it, it, it uh, uh, opens up. I'm not going to say that name. <laughs> Do it in there. So, so this one, first of all, let's rename this one as unit. It's called an alias. Okay? <laughs> an alias. 
So this one is line unit test. Oh, I should have. Uh, so we know which one was when. Okay, so I've just renamed it over there. So now I actually need. They change features in editors. It hurts. I mean, like. In old times, in Visual Studio, little, like I, little things they do, like I used to, I used to do this, and type. What do you think is going to happen now? No, when you type, oh, this what this time happened. Seriously, I like, I do something. I'll, I'll show you right now. Integer, so in here I'm going to say integer i. I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you later. But anyways, now it doesn't replace it. It actually puts the things around it. So now I'm going to say over here 10. i is 10. Are we okay with this? Okay, now I want to create a new name for i. Let's call that r. Okay? I'm going to put over here integer reference r is equal to i. That ampersand that comes after type is called the reference, which essentially means alias, which essentially means nickname. I do not have two integers now. I have one integer with two names. One is R, the other one is I. These two names are identical. These two names sit at the same place in memory. So essentially, if I actually write over here, C out unsigned, just to make sure that it's casted properly, address of i and unsigned. Uh, what it prints. It means they are sitting in the same place in memory. They are not two. Well, that's the proof for it. There is no trick behind it. They are literally the same thing. Obviously, doing so, obviously doing so, forget about those warnings. You're going to see how we're going to fix those warnings at the end of the semester again using templates. Okay? But anyways, so... In here, if I say R is, uh, if I say C out I, obviously 10 is going to get printed. So, so in here, I'm going to say I. Okay? And if I say over here C out R, obviously 10 is going to get printed. But if I say R is set to 200 and I print them, you will see that they're both changed. It's not they are both changed is the wrong thing to say. The integer is changed. They are the same. So they, are, they, are, they both is the wrong thing to say. Do we understand this? That's. I'm going to say it to me in a. Pass it. Oh, shoot. Line five. Integer pointer. Read it in English. Integer pointer was fine, but integer pointer what? Integer pointer I. This is I? Integer pointer P. Thank you. Give it to the next person. Integer pointer P, that's all I wanted to, to hear, okay? Good. Uh, 
Read it. P P has the address of uh, the pointer P. So P has the address of the integer i. That's not a point, that's not, I, asterisk over here doesn't mean pointer. What does it mean? <laughs> P is, P is pointer. It's this, this doesn't mean pointer, pointer P. Pardon me? Okay, let me just tell you what it means, because maybe I didn't mention it in this class. Asterisk, when it comes before a variable of type pointer, is called target of. So, now read it. Target of, uh i is 32 p of 32 so yeah target of p, p is, 32. is 32 which means i is 32 right so target of, so i want you to read these things properly give it to the over there so this one was integer i this one was integer pointer p this one was P is set to address of I. This one is target of P is set to 32. I don't know why I'm putting semicolon at the end of the th my English statements, but it's, I think, a C habit. Now, the next person, I don't, uh, okay, the next person, okay, so now. When an ampersand comes after a tape, when an ampersand comes after a type, it's called a reference. Integer what? No, no. Go exactly like that. We said ampersand after int is called a reference. So integer what r? Integer reference r is set to? I. Thank you very much. Next person. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So, integer reference. R. Actually, one more question. R. Read that, please, in English. R is set to? I continue. What is this? Multiplied, Multiplied. by target of P. So R is set to? Whoa, whoa. R is set to I. R is set to I multiplied by target of P. Okay? Now, <laughs> uh, the next person is going to do something um, that you have to guess what is what. Okay? First. So let's go through asterisk, understand what asterisk is first. Asterisk, okay, asterisk. When coming after a pointer, uh, sorry, asterisk when coming after a type means pointer. Integer pointer, employee pointer, float pointer, double pointer. Asterisk when you go, what the heck? That means target of. 
Okay? When it doesn't make sense, when it's a unary operator before something, definitely that thing is a pointer. And you have target of whatever. So if you see asterisk A, you know A is a pointer. There is no other way if it's a unary argument. Okay? So it becomes pointer, whatever. It becomes target of whatever. Target of whatever. Target of P, target of A, target of X, right? Ampersand. When it comes after a type, it's reference. So integer reference, double reference, employee reference. Ampersand, when it comes before a variable, it means address of, as a unary operator. What is a unary operator? An operator that only has one operand, minus 5 plus B, not A, when it's only one, one operator and something beside it. So when you have ampersand beside something, it is extracting its address, so it becomes address of. Are we okay with this thing? When you have ampersand just standing by, it by itself, A ampersand B, what does it mean? It's, a, it's an and that you don't know what it is. You're going to see it in OP345. That's a bitwise and. Okay? It's called and. If you have two of them, A and ampersand ampersand B, that's a logical and. Right? So these are all the things that we need to know. Now, you are up for a challenge, my friend. Okay? How do you read this? Thank you. So that's kind of e equals m equals MC2, but with a, a C++ taste. OK? So from now on, please say these things as such. Don't ever say asterisk A. Don't ever say integer star. Never do that. When you say it right, it's going to fit in your brain. Okay, when you say it actual meaning, you will understand it. Are we okay down to this point? Now, the next step is, so this is uh, B references and how to say things. <laughs> okay, only for a See, uh, uh, professor, that's funny. Want to know what else it is? Okay, so, so we know what references are, right? All right. The next thing is this. Uh, next, give it to the lady. You have it? Okay. I want you to tell me what is the difference between these two, two things. What is the difference between line 4 and line 5 and 6 combined? It's not. Pass it to the next person, please. What's the difference? There are huge difference between the two with object orientation view. What's the difference between line 4 and line 5, 6? Give it to him because apparently he's trying to get it to go. No? No? Give it to the next person. <laughs> there you go. Initialize. So, in, go ahead. Uh, so, in line 4, B, line Second mistake. You, I'm going to start. Okay. Initial, so, you said integer i is initialized to? Zero. You have to say 0. Maybe it was 25. Okay. Next one. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, and sign. Zero. Thank you. So at the first line number four, we initialize i to zero. At line five, we create j. Then we set j to zero. What's the difference? i will never exist ever without a zero in it. i will be born 
with zero in it. That's initialization. You will, at no moment of time, you're going to have I with anything else. It starts with a zero. Line number five, you have J with garbage in it. So you will have J with garbage. Then you overwrite that garbage with zero. So you set garbage to zero. I know the outcome at line seven is I and J being both zero. But it's an extremely important thing is that I will never be or ever exist with garbage in it. It gets initialized at the moment of creation. Therefore, this operator and this operator are two different things. They are not assignment operator. They are not both assignment. Line number six assignment. Line number four is initialization. So. If I do this, so I'm going to actually make this 10 and make this 20. No difference. Now in here, I'm going to say C out I, C out J, right? We have all these good stuff, correct? Let me see if compiler allows me actually to print that. It may give me an error. Old compilers, they allowed you to do that. It doesn't let me. Because it's type safe now. It's going to say, you are trying to print an uninitialized variable. What do you want to do? It's going to print garbage. Why do you want garbage? Right? It won't allow me to do that. In old compilers, they used to. OK? So not only that, I want to show you this. Actually. J, K, L. I'm going to put M something. Oh, come down. There you go. All right. They're all the same. Line number four, five, six are the same. I am initializing something. So never call this assignment or ever think that that's an assignment. Do we understand this? All right? Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. Pardon me? No, no, identical. Identical. And the last one is a new one. It's called aggregate initialization, like that curly bracket. You don't need assignment or anything. You put it in front of anything, it's going to initialize it. I'm going to show you another thing. <clears throat> so before I rename it, you can actually have this. That's a beautiful thing about it. It initializes it to its default value. You don't need to mention what. If you put those things in front of anything, if it has a default state, it will be set to. So if it's a pointer, it becomes a zero. If it's an uh, integer, it becomes zero. If it's a double, it becomes 0, 0.0. Uh, whatever the default value of something is, is going to set it to that one. It makes your life much easier. So you don't need to think about, what do I set this thing to make it default? You don't need to. You just put curly bracket in front of it. No, it's going to print zero because the initialized initial value for an integer is zero. Right? It's print blank. Where did you get that? Like, how can it make it blank? Pfft, no bits in there. There are going to be bits. There are zeros. Blank? You have a good imagination, my friend. OK. So now in here, I'm going to say C difference between initialization and uh, assignment. Are we okay? Down to this point? 
Yes. Parentheses is the old version, and it cannot be set everywhere. Well, you'll see later on. But it's the old version of cur curly bracket replaces everything. So you can use it in, you, it, it replaces assignment and curly bracket and, and parentheses. And later on, you will see what these things actually represent. Why we can do this in C++ and not C. It's because it's an object-oriented language, and each object should be able to have a default state. We'll come to it later on in, in a couple of weeks. Okay? And this is going to make absolute. I'm just introducing the syntax. When I teach you about why, you're going to go, uh-huh. Okay? Well, we know this is the syntax. Because you're going to see this when you chat GPT something. I want you to understand what that is. He did it yesterday. No, not that he never does it. Like his computer is blocked with chat GPT. <laughs> Are we good? All right. All right. So next thing we need to know are how functions actually are called. We never know actually what happens behind the scene when you, I see people are leaving. You want a break? Because this was the most important thing, and three people went out. Those are the three people who got to go, what the heck? Uh, you want to take five minutes break? Yes. yes. yes five, please, five minutes, not 25, OK? Five minutes. Attention to this part. This is important. How are the function co functions called in, in C language? Yes. <laughs> New. Yeah, but that's not what I wanted to, like, not the syntax-wise, behind the scene. Okay, so, yeah, of course. <laughs> How is it called? You put the function and you put braces in. Yeah, that I know. Okay, so, uh, so, <laughs> no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Integer, <laughs> integer, <laughs> I'm not going to put actually integer, I'm just going to put over here char uh, character, uh, uh, name, Come on. <clears throat> Sorry, the brain is working in one way and the, all right. So <clears throat> if I say over here foo 20, and I say over here foo, I say foo, I type four. Uh, and foo uh, name, and I write here foo, uh, Jack, all right? If I write something here, what is actually called? And I'm getting an error over here because this is not const. That's called type safety, by the way, because this is the constant character pointer. That wasn't the constant character pointer. It cannot match it. You look like a question mark. Yes, what is <laughs> okay. okay, you know what const is? Cannot change if it's const. Can you change jack? No, it's a literal value. Yes. Can you change jack? So you know what jack is when you put double quotes around it? It's a string. Is that a string constant or it's changeable? It's constant. No, you cannot change it. It's literal value. How can you change You cannot change it, right? Because you can't change it, this is actually a constant character pointer. This is a constant character array. So you cannot pass it to a regular because you can change s in void foo if it's not constant. Therefore, it's going to interfere with this. Got it? I can pass a non-constant to a const, no problem. I'm just enforcing that I don't want to change the value of this because it's a pointer, right? Name in there. But in here, I'm passing jack. Jack is a constant thing. If I don't put const over here, I can change s, and that's against jack being a constant. Yes, of course it works. 
Oh, let's, let me show how the functions are called and we're going to go. So, when a function is called, it is called this way. So, this is foo. It's going to be called as exactly like this, literally. Foo int val equals 20. That's how it's called. It literally initializes the argument with the value you passed creates it and starts, and val dies at the end of function. Are we okay with this? Now, <clears throat> if the other one is called void, uh, sorry, the other one is called foo, in here I have const character pointer s is set to name. That is perfectly okay, right? Because s is a pointer, let's, let's make our lives easier. Because pointer over here is freaky for some reason. I'll exp I'll. Potatoes, potatoes, same thing, right? Right? Same thing, right? Are we okay with that? Just made it an array so everybody's happy. Okay? If I say so, it becomes something like this, which is perfectly okay. You can initialize values like that. I just did it over here. You see that? The difference is that in here, name, Fred will go in name and I can change name, but in here, S cannot change name because S is constant. Okay? And it goes like this too. Full const character S like that, and it goes Fred. Jack. But behind the scene, this is really a pointer. It's not like that. But anyways. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <clears throat> so, uh, do we understand how functions are car called? The argument of the function gets initialized by the value that is passed to it. We okay with that? All Now, that brings us to the next thing. Remember the references? We said that references, oh, and another thing about references that I did not mention that I have to mention is this one. Oh, shoot, I forgot to mention that. Bad boy I am. So we created an integer i, and I set it to 10, right? Then I created integer reference r, and we set it to i, correct? Right, we did that, right? Now, in real life, can I have an alias without an already existing name? No, you have to have a name to give it an alias, right? It's the exact same thing with a reference. Reference is an alias, so you cannot do this. That's a syntax error. You cannot just create a reference. You have to have something to point to. Reference variable R requires an initializer. You have to initialize it. There is no way to create a reference just by itself. The reference must be initialized by something. We good down to this point? Now, this is where it becomes beautiful. <clears throat> so, int uh, void set, and I'm going to say integer uh, val. And set to 0. And I'm going to say val is equal to 0. If I say over here set to 0, <coughs> i, and I'll go see out i, the person with the microphone, what is the output of the following program? Who has the microphone? Okay. Look at it first, and it's a trick question. What is the, uh, it's not very tricky, everybody knows. I know, I can sit down now. He's like, oh, you got to say something. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's zero? You think so? Wrong, it's not. It's not zero. Let's walk through it. Let's see how it's called. How is it called in here? It's called set to zero. Int val is equal to i. Correct? Correct? 
So val will get initialized with the value of i. Therefore, val becomes 10. Then val becomes 0 and dies. It has nothing to do with i. Are we good with that? Anybody over here have problem with what I just wrote? This is IPC144, people. I have set to zero. I just named it badly. It's a buggy program. This is a walkthrough that I give you in the next quiz that you're going to open. OK? So you don't trust the name, because bug, by definition, is something that doesn't make sense. Right? So the name is set to zero. It's getting a value, sets that value to zero. That int value is a local variable in function set to zero. It's destroyed and gone after it's done. Now, when I call set to zero, set to zero is called, gets initialized to i. So val will copy the value of i into it. Val becomes a copy of i, correct? And val will hold the value 10. 10 will be set to zero. It comes out, val dies. Does it have anything to do with i? No, i was a different variable, val is a different variable. This is exactly as if I write this code. Does it have to do anything with i? No. Exactly the same thing. Correct? Are we OK with this? What? Hey, shesh, hey, if you want to say what we can do, don't say it. We're going to say it later. OK, OK. Are we OK down to this point? Do we all understand this? Do we understand? Are we OK with this? No. OK, perfect. All right. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to overload that function. Not overload, change that function and do this now. Nope. Now, what happens? The function call is as follows. What's happening over here is this I'm saying set to zero i. Val, that is a reference, becomes a new name for i. There is no new integer. Val is i. It is a new name for it. Therefore, in here, when I change val, I am actually changing i. Therefore, i changes. It's not zero. It's not 10 anymore. It will change the value. That's the beautiful side effect of a reference. With a reference, you don't, if I wanted to write this in IPC144, this is what I had to write. Integer pointer val. And then if I wanted to actually set something over here, say, say I have j set to 100, if I wanted to set it, I had to say set to 0 and then pass the address of j. So therefore, the function call would have been changed to set to 0. Of course, there's an o over there. And then in here, it's going to be integer pointer val set to address of j. Therefore, val will be set to address of j, and target of val will be 0. Right? So instead of all the stuff target of an address and all those stuff, now you can use references. So you don't have to worry about it. It just becomes a new name for an already existing thing, and it returns the value out. Are we OK with this? All right. And if I run this program, yes. Well, where is the second print? Yes, go ahead. One more time, uh, what you were saying? Oh, somebody turned it off. Nobody was talking to the microphone. Somebody turned it off. Who was it? Was it you? Yes, it was you. Okay, go ahead. So like, 
What's the advantage of using uh, reference instead of using pointer? Wasn't it a beautiful thing right now? I'm sorry, but it's being more convenient. But because it's like, it okay. makes a copy. It's okay. It's like less efficient. No, it's not. Who says it's make a copy? I don't know. When you pass by that. When you are doing. Hi, hi, hi. You are making an extra variable when you are using a pointer. So you are wasting memory when you are using a pointer. First of all, and another thing, I don't know who gave you that idea of pass by pointer and pa pass by address, pass by value. There is no such thing. Everything is pass by value. There is no pass by address ever. C and C++ doesn't have that capability. What is this val? It's a variable. It's a variable. You are setting that value, you copy the target address of J in it. So you created a value, you put an integer into it, which was an address of something. So <coughs> argument was not passed by address, it was passed by value. What was passed by address was J. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yes, I was lying to so yeah, yeah, that's I don't know why that this is something that you need to know. Nothing in C or C can be passed by address. There is no such mechanism. You can fool it. You can create a pointer, create a big object, and pass the object, pass the address of the object by value. Therefore, the address is passed by value, and it happens to be address of something outside. So that outside thing was passed by address, but it wasn't, you know what I mean? It's the, this is always a copy. So in this one, nothing was created. There is no extra argument variable created. It's one integer you have, you just give it a new name. In here, you are creating a variable, happens to be eight bytes. It's a 64-bit machine. Eight bytes of address to hold the address of a four-byte integer, so you are adding an extra eight bytes to do this. Over here, you're doing nothing. Not only that, in future, it's going to make crazy stuff happening. I'll demonstrate. So C D E. Uh, because your brain is ready for that at the time. You always do that. When you have a child, what do you do? You always lie to them. <laughs> to make to make makes things like what happened? I put a put like I'm gonna put this puny toony under your pillow, like tooth fairy came over here because your tooth fell. She's happy. It doesn't matter. She forgets about the pain because there's a toonie under the thing. You know, because you really think like Tooth Fairy came over there? No, it's a lie. When you are starting programming, and I do too, many times I lie to you just to put you at ease, understand this concept, then two weeks from now I said, I lied. This is the reality. <laughs> Otherwise, if, I, if we had the capacity to get everything from scratch, that would have been difficult. So, all right? So, yeah. So in here I was saying reference intro. Now take a look at this. I want to show you something interesting. So let's say in here I have a global variable. Now get ready for this. Tax. Taz? No, tax. Tax, that's 0.7. Okay? And I have a function, okay? I'll put over here double the tax. And I return tax. Are we okay with this? Why not? It's a global variable, right? I'm going to say over here, see out the tax. And three years later, 
it's going to print 0 0.7. Are we okay with this? Now, <clears throat> can I do this? What the hell? Of course not. It's a function. You're setting a function to something? It's crazy. Right? No, it's not. Actually, I can't do it. <laughs> Look at this. So the tax, the function becomes a new name for the variable tax. So you can actually set a function that returns a reference to something because now the tax, the tax function is a new name for the tax variable. And now, so I can use it both ways. So I can do it like, I can, I can read it, I can write it. Got it? So the answer why, you will find out that this crazy thing that I have done with, point, with reference makes absolute sense in future when we try to make the primitive structure of C work efficiently. Like, for example, in, in C you have arrays, right? They suck because they don't, you don't know what the size is. You can exceed the size. You have to decide how many you have right at the beginning. You cannot change. You have to always take triple size of stuff. We're going to fix all those things. We're going to create our own custom arrays. We're going to create our own custom stuff. And all these things are going to help us do that. So this, I call it crazy reference. It's going to be in your uh, quiz. OK? I love his, I love, I love his references, reference. I love his interpretation. It's crazy. It's, it's dangerous. Like what's going to happen? <laughs> no, it's, it's not dangerous. It's not only not dangerous, but extremely useful and makes sense in future. You will see that we need that. I gave you an intro just to show you that a function can be a left value if it returns a modifiable reference. Obviously, I could have done this, and it would have been problem. Now it's a constant reference, which means it, it modifies the tax. It's still a reference, but it's read-only reference. That's going to be error. So we can protect it if we want to, but if we don't want to, we can open it. And you will see that it comes extremely. Please remember the crazy reference uh, example. Later on, we'll, we'll talk about it. When I say, remember crazy reference? Now I'm going to do this and recall this. Yes? You initialize the global variable with constant, I mean, double tax. No, you can't. Then you cannot make no, a no. reference. No, no. You can make a reference. It has to be constant. You cannot. In, in OOP244, you can't. In OOP345, you can't. When you know more, C++ gives you the type safety. It's like, I'm sorry to give you this example, OK? It gives you a gun with safety on it. So you can set the safety on so it doesn't go off. You can set the safety off, and you can shoot yourself in the foot if you want to. So it gives you the power. We are not telling you yet how, but later on you'll see you can actually remove constantness of something. We don't know it yet, OK? And even that makes sense when the time comes. Why you want to remove constantness of something? You see, we give you the power. Then you have to take the safety off if you want to go hunting and not die of hunger. Right? So on certain times, you need to actually turn the safety off and make something that was constant, not constant, so you can modify it. But we need to learn how. We need to have the knowledge to be able to use that power. OK? So what are arrays in C? When I have an array in C, how is it actually implemented? I need to know how arrays in C are actually implemented. For that, 
I need to have a kind of closer look of what arrays are behind the scene. So when you look at an array behind the scene, this is what you see. When you create an array, integer A5, for example, what happens is that inside the executable of your program, it puts five integers back to back in memory, where one sits right after the other one. And then it creates a pointer of type integer, puts the address of the very first one in it. And they tell you, we created an array, another lie. He's like, I cannot believe this. This is all just scam. OK, but, but that's, that's what it is. Take a look at it. So in here, as I showed you in the example, and this is not C++, this is C, but we need to know it. So I'm going to say integer A5. And in here, I'm going to put 10, 20, 30, and 40, and 50. Right? Then I'm going to create integer pointer P, oh, oh, pointer P, and I'm going to set that to A. Because A is a pointer. It's holding the address of beginning of everything. Now, you can say, see out target of A. Actually, you don't need to, this to say that. If you do this, it shows the first element because A is pointing to the first one. A is a pointer, right? And if I do something like this, if I say integer pointer P is set to A, or I could say address of, or yeah, A, and I say C out, tar C out P2, it's going to show me the element with index 2. Arrays, pointers, arrays, pointers, potatoes, potatoes. The <clears throat> a pointer is like a snake with a head only. <laughs> An array is a snake with the head. It has the tail and everything. You can actually follow. OK? It's the same thing. Do we understand this? OK? So <clears throat> yeah, and we have, we have all crazy type of stuff that we can do uh, and I'll, that I'll explain later. OK? But that's, it's, and, it's, and that's why the, uh, the whole thing with arrays uh, can be manipulated uh, using dynamic memory allocation. So the program, so this is, um, <sighs> so we're going back to the thing that we were saying. We were going. We are going back to the uh, thing we were saying. Write a program that receives unknown number of integers from user and prints it in reserve, reverse order. Now I need to have an array with the size that I want. How do I do that? So I ask the user, "How many do you have? Tell me now." When it's getting executed, they know how many. Okay. So the very first thing I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say. See out how many ints. And I'm going to have a size, and I'm going to say C in size. OK, so I'm going to get how many ints I have. I want an array. I don't know what the size is. I'm just going to create the head of the snake down to, down to this point. So in here, I'm going to say int pointer nums. And I'm going to make it null. Remember that thing that I mentioned? You just put that in front of it, so it becomes 0. Uh, an unused state of a pointer is always null. You have to always keep it null. Because now you know there's no address in it. It doesn't point everywhere, anywhere. Now I'm going to, instead of asking the compiler, instead of asking the compiler, to put <clears throat> the array inside my executable and do all these things by writing that, I'm going to say forget about the compiler. I'm going to ask the operating system when the program is running, not at the compile time. 
When it's running, I'm going to ask operating system, can I have these many integers, please? So operating system is going to give you those memory from a shared memory that all programs can use, not from your executable. It's going to be outside of your program. So in here, I'm going to say operating system. I have, I want size integer, size new integer. So you say new in size. So this size could be three, five, nine, whatever it is. It goes and finds some free piece of memory somewhere and allocates it outside and passes its address to you using the new command. So new, you're telling to the compiler, I want new integer array with the size of whatever. And you put that one in the pointer that you have. Now, if the pointer that you have is null, which is not going to happen anytime soon for you, you're going to say, not enough memory. It means your, your computer is running out of memory. You ask the operating system access, sorry, I don't have it. But if it is not null, it means you now have an array. Now that you have an array, you can start getting the arrays one by one. You can start getting them saying, OK, uh, for integer i, Let's put the integer over here, integer, uh, integer i4, i set to 0, i less than size, and i++, plus because plus, that's exactly the size that you have. You prompt the user for the thing, so i plus 1, and you do that, and you ask the user to enter it one by one. Now you can actually say c in num i, nums i, because now you have an array that is dynamically allocated when the program is running. And it's exactly to the size you want, not more, not less. And as soon as you receive all the numbers one by one, you can actually say for i set to size minus 1 and i greater than or equal to 0 and i minus minus, you can actually print them in reverse order. What, what, what did you say? I have no idea what you're talking about. No! I'm still inside my elves. I'm not got out. Ah, okay, okay. <clears throat> It cannot be outside because outside I may not. The only place I'm sure that I have memory is here. Outside of this, it may be no. And after I do all these things, I have to give the memory back to the operating system because I asked for it. Because I asked for it, I have to give it back. I have to say, thank you, I did what I needed to do. Delete nums. Now when I run the program, <clears throat> it actually allocates the memory exactly to the size I want to have three. It's going to give me three. And it prints it in reverse order. If I want to have eight, it's going to give me eight. And every single time, the size will be exactly what I want because it receives exactly, it exactly creates the amount that I want and does it the same way. So essentially, what you will see would be this. So by creating an array dynamically, you are asking the operating system to allocate that one in the heap and send you the memory back, the address of the memory. Your executable shrinks. Your program runs more, more efficiently. There is a danger for it, though. So many times, people forget to delete. And do you know what happens? What do you call that? when you forget to delete? Memory leak. That's when memory leak happens. And with memory leak comes, you have this, you have at home and you see suddenly you don't have internet connection. You call Rogers, well, I don't have internet connection. Unplug the modem, wait for 15 seconds, put it back in. Because the program have memory leak, it keeps leaking when you are doing connection and the memory of the modem gets full, it hangs. There's no more memory to run anything. 
you unplug it, you reset it, everything starts from beginning, <laughs> and then you go for the next one. Okay, that's the introduction for pointers. The next time you're coming in the lab, we'll finish the pointers. Okay? So please, now you are go about to go and study pointers. It's extremely important to do so, okay? No, delete is just delete. Clear buffer is a completely different thing. New means new. New means you're getting, it's a, it's a function that gives you, and I'll tell you how to do all the things. Uh, we'll go, read the notes for uh, dynamic memory allocation. You come back, I'll go through everything in detail. Have a beautiful day. You have to give me a second. I have to, because the other prof is going to come, I have to pack things. Then I'm going to come outside and, uh, and pardon me? You uh, did you do it with uh, 